In this presentation, we're going to talk about how you can use Houdini Engine to bring procedural digital assets from Houdini into game editors such as Unity and Unreal Engine 4. To get started, let's take a look at what Houdini can do for you. Houdini is a procedural node-based solution that allows you to create a node every time you do something. What this means is that these nodes then get connected into networks that define a flow of data or a recipe uh, that can be used over and over again uh, as you work. If you change something in one of the nodes, that will propagate through the network and you'll get a different result. This is what makes Houdini procedural. Once you have these networks, one of the features that Houdini's had for quite a while is the ability to take these and share them as digital assets. Let's take a little look at how that works. You start with your node network, uh, a whole bunch of nodes networked together, and what they can be done is encapsulated into a single node. The original nodes sit inside this new asset node. What you then do is build a high-level interface for it. So you take parameters from inside the network, promote them up, and they give you access to control what's going on under the surface. You can then take this and share this with other Houdini artists. And this is traditionally how this has worked. Now, as we got started working more and more with game artists, uh, the question came, well, what if I want to bring this into other applications, like Unreal or Unity? So what they wanted to do was bring those assets in, but still manipulate the controls that existed on those assets. So that's where we created the Houdini engine. So the Houdini engine says, if you load a digital asset into one of these other apps, then the Houdini engine will go off, find the libraries that sit within Houdini itself, and cook the nodes. Basically, calculate uh, and update what the, the flow of data in the network, and, and send the results back to the game editor. What's exciting about this is not only is this available to applications such as Unity Unreal, but it also works for other applications like Maya or Cinema 4D. As a matter of fact, there's an API you can take, uh, create a plugin for any application you have or any custom application you have, and you'll be able to load digital assets into there as well. Now, this is a little bit abstract, this diagram, so let's go and take a look at a real example. So what we're going to do is we're going to build this simple building here. We're going to build it from scratch, and we're going to take it into the Unreal 4 editor and, and sort of go back and forth between the two, and you can see how the parameters and the nodes and the, and the assets all work together. So here we are in Houdini, and we're going to start by creating first the grid uh, for one of the for the columns. We're going to create one of the columns. We'll bring it in, give it a size, appropriate size for the column. Uh, we're going to just make a little expression there to make sure it sits on the ground. And now, as you can see, even if we change the size, it'll always sit on the ground. We're going to take this, and we want to copy it. So we're going to say, let's take that column and copy it to all the points of the grid. Uh, make sure they align properly. And now we have a column, a grid of columns. Now we're going to go in, add another slab. This slab will be for the next level. And we'll just uh, move that up. Now we're going to take those two and combine them into a single network. And now we have a network that combines the columns and the slab. We're going to put a duplicate node down and we're going to copy it up. And what you see is everything we do in Houdini, a node is created and those nodes have parameters. And we can go back and make changes um, to this. And that, uh, that's how the Houdini sort of procedural workflow uh, operates. So now we're going to go and save it out as a digital asset uh, or an HDA file. And that's a file that sits on disk that can be shared with other people. So here we are in Unreal uh, Engine 4. We're going to import that same digital asset and we're going to drag it into the scene. And there we go. But at the moment, this asset is just a normal asset. We go over here, it's got the same controls as if you brought in any other piece of static geometry from another app. What we want to do is add more controls. So we're going to go in and add some normals in, actually just clean up the normals on that. Let's uh, look at the parameter section here. You see we have no parameters. And now we start dragging parameters from inside the network um, to the top level of this asset. So we're going to change the number of copies, the number of floors. Now we'll update, rebuild here, and as we go in, you'll see those parameters are now available. And, there, and now we can change the size and the number of floors right here uh, in the editor. And the engine, the Houdini engine, is in the background, and so every time you move 
adjust one of those parameters, the engine updates in the background uh, and feeds the results back in the editor. The key here is that this is a procedural engine for content creation. Uh, the proceduralism will not go into your gameplay later on. It's not a runtime solution. But for content creation, this can be a great way of preparing tools that you give to your game uh, artists working in the editor, and they're able to work uh, with these smart assets and accomplish more. Um, and you can always go back. So if, if somebody's working with an asset, says, yeah, but now I want a, a ramp so I can go up to the other levels, you can go back, fix the asset, save it, and that propagates to anyone who's using this asset in whatever scene will benefit from the changes that you just made. So we're going to save that out, and then we rebuild, and you'll notice that now we have a ramp. And as a matter of fact, we have a ramp on all three floors, and we can actually walk around on that ramp. So this is what the Houdini engine does for you. It allows you to create procedural content that can, then gets instanced into different scenes. For instance, this is scene one, but there might be another scene where the same asset is used in another scene or another part of the game, and then it might be a little taller, it might be a little wider, a little, slightly different shape. But at the core, um, the same um, asset is feeding uh, both those shots. Now if we press uh, play again, we just made that a little taller, so at any time we can go back and change our mind. What's nice here is also that quick interaction between the person working on the, on the asset and um, the ability to go and test it, go back and make changes, test it, go back. That's a really nice workflow. So here we are in Unity, and what we can see is the exactly same asset can actually be brought in there as well. And again, Houdini is in the background um, modifying this. Now in this case, we added a couple extra parameters. So there's the asset uh, in place, and we can again control its size like we did back in, in UE4. Uh, we can also control the number of floors like we did before. In addition though, we've also added a couple other parameters like column height. Uh, so we added the ability to change the column height and, the, and, and all the levels change. We also did the overhang in case you want a bigger or smaller overhang. So you can imagine this asset could lay many, many, many parameters that allow each artist using an asset to get custom results. Let's look at some other kinds of assets that you might use in the game pipeline. So in this case, we have some assets that were built uh, for a sort of a, a spooky sort of haunted house game. And each one of these assets uh, is procedural in nature and has the ability to be modified in the game editor uh, as opposed to going back to Houdini each and every time you want to make a change. So here we are in a game editor and you see that we actually are able to draw uh, walls simply by laying down a curve. And that curve goes down and the wall is generated. The corners are dealt with, um, the paintings are actually laid on the, on the wall appropriately and we're getting exactly the result that we want. And if we don't like it, we just move the points around and we get uh, a better result. Here we have a staircase. Uh, we can control the width, uh, we can control the, the endpoints, we can control the, the rise and the run. Uh, also, if we move the endpoint, we'll actually get new stairs added in. You know, just imagine traditionally to do something like this, you'd have to go back to a modeler. You know, here we are building this wall. Oh, I don't like exactly how this is. You know what? I want to make the, the window smaller. Again, you traditionally have to go back to a modeler and ask for that, whereas now these kinds of assets in your pipeline will allow the that work to be done in the game editor itself. That flexibility is built in. And this asset takes advantage of instancing. All these various pieces inside the assets are set up using instancing so that when they go into the game uh, engine and get prepared for the game, uh, they will be as efficient as possible. Uh, again, here's a table. You make it longer, you get more chairs. Uh, you can even have controls for how many chairs do you want. You can get rid of some of them. Uh, you can change the rotation of them so that it sort of looks a little bit unkept. Uh, you can also add props to the top of the table. Uh, all of these are parameters that are available for these kinds of assets uh, that allow you to get as much flexibility as possible. So here we are with these various haunted house assets and we're using them to build up a level. So the curves can be used to build the walls. So you can take existing profile curves and add walls to them. Here we are adding staircases in. And look at how if we make a small little staircase, we only get about five or six steps. If we make a longer staircase, we get more steps. So the assets are doing some of the work for you uh, and they're making a much 
simpler workflow uh, that can be managed here in the editor itself. Uh, procedural assets have huge benefits in workflow uh, that can help a uh, game development cycle in many ways. Uh, bring in this wall with windows, tack it in, we get the right number of windows, add in a door, um, make it the width that we want, make it the height we want, all of that using parameters uh, set up uh, using these procedural assets. And again, here's the table that we just saw before, bringing that into place, setting it up, adding the props. Here it is being tested. Uh, you can test it and see how it works. And what's, what's exciting is that if you don't like what, you, what, what, the, what you're getting, if this doesn't feel right, you just go back, adjust some pieces, move some curves, it, it regenerates, and then you go back and test again. So the ability to go back and forth uh, like that is, is important. Uh, the same kinds of assets, here we have them in uh, UE4. Uh, this is actually a sampler um, scene that you can actually get off of the side effects website, uh, which allows you to move around, touch some of these assets, see what they do, uh, play with some of their parameters. Um, you, know, you can pick, for instance, the, the, the staircase just like we had before, go in and start manipulating the same parameters we did in, in Unity. Now, it's not that you particularly are going to go back and forth uh, between two editors at any one time, but it's important to understand that the solution that, that, that the Houdini engine offers uh, really is the same for all the different editors that you, that you might want to work with. Um, and as we mentioned before, this could also be, these assets could also be opened up in, in, in an application such as Maya or 3D Max, um, you know, to even widen your pipeline beyond that. Here's another asset we have that uh, populates a building with windows and doors. So in this case here, the building is an asset that already exists in the Unity editor, and the asset we brought in is simply about adding windows and doors to it. So if you put a window in, uh, it wraps the texture around the side, uh, allows you to set the position and width, how many of these windows you want, um, and you know, do I want a door? Where do I want that door? Position the door, maybe put a staircase in, uh, maybe add some lights. Uh, a whole bunch of different things are possible here. So the, the, wor and the workflows you build for this, these are not tools that are given to you. These are tools you build yourself. So you have one person build a, a tool for adding windows and doors, and that tool is then shared with your various uh, level editors. And what's exciting about that is that the tool manages many of the under the surface issues like are the normals pointed the right way, is it the right size, the right scale, uh, are the textures being dealt with properly, is instancing being used to be as efficient as possible. The assets themselves manage those little details so if you get the asset right then all of the instances or all the uses of that asset uh, will you'll all get, get consistent results and quality results that will make it um, better for creating a game. Um, here's a nice round window, push it back, uh, and there we go. So, you know, another asset we have here is one for adding ivy. So in this case, you can actually take the surface of the building and paint on that surface. Um, we're just switching out the little teapot for the actual building itself. So now we're going to use the building. We can actually paint on the building and decide where would we like to see some ivy that fits into this. So there's a number of different interfaces that the engine allows you to work with while you're um, building uh, geometry using these assets. So in this case here, say that's where we want the vines to be, give a little sample of it, add some detail um, so we have more points, and then just add more leaves, more endpoints, which can also give us leaves and uh, leave density and there we go and now we've got vines actual 3d vines attached to there and these vines use instancing but with all the leaves so it's as efficient as possible from a gameplay point of view and you're getting the best uh, solution for your game that you can uh, next i'd like to show you uh, a project done by uh, a houdini indie customer uh, Luis garcia from feline arts who's created a game called suki and the shadow claw which uses houdini engine for populating his game with assets so in this case here, he originally created these assets in other applications, imported them in, and then used uh, Houdini's tool to make a procedural 
sort of copies of this. So in this case here, we've got this bridge. Uh, the one asset that he brought in can now be used to create one of these procedural bridges. So all he does is draw a curve, add points to the curve, and it creates kinks in his bridge that he can lay into here. And again, some of the things I talked about before, what's nice about this is if he's laying down, let's say, 50 bridges in his game, he knows that they're all built on the same geometry, the same core ideas that he was able to uh, set up properly. So he's not remodeling it each and every time. He's literally uh, pulling from this um, tool that he has. Uh, here we have a, a, a fence being built. Again, just draw a curve, add some points, and it inserts in the detail necessary uh, to get the fence. So because of this, he's, his game, um, his level generation is going to be much more rapid, it's going to be more consistent, uh, and he's able to get his game out uh, faster. And here's the gameplay uh, with the many, of, many of these assets generated using the Houdini techniques. Uh, he's able to build his levels, test them out, go back, reconfigure them. You know, one of the things he talked about here was just these tunnels. They were built procedurally as well. And if they weren't exactly the right width, the, the dragon wouldn't roll through them properly. So again, the asset ensured that he was getting that consistency and, and was able to uh, know that it was going to work every time. Well, I hope I've given you a good introduction to Houdini Engine and what Houdini Engine can do. We have a, an indie version of Houdini Engine, which is actually available for free. You can get it off of our website, sideeffects.com. Uh, you can also follow us on Twitter and Facebook, and uh, we look forward to seeing you in the community. Have a good day.